Good evening, or if you're watching tomorrow, good morning or good afternoon. I'm Dr. Jennifer Jackson, and I am the very proud principal at the Fort Worth Academy of Fine Arts. And I'm so happy to welcome you to our very first online open house. And as you can see, we're kind of in a different way open and we are literally in my house and you are probably in your house, but nevertheless, we are absolutely thrilled uh, to get to talk to you tonight about our amazing school and um, all of the great things that our amazing students are doing. So just to kick off our evening, I would like to introduce our fearless leader, and although he has only been with us for about a month, he's already breathed new life and enthusiasm into our organization. And I know that we are going to continue to do even greater things for kids under his leadership. So I would like to introduce to you, Mr. Paul Gravely. Thank you, Dr. Jackson. What an honor and a joy it is to be part of the Texas Center for Arts and Academics and the flagship FWAFA, Fort Worth Academy of Fine Arts. What a, uh, it's amazing. I'm sitting in my office and not more, 30 minutes ago as I was walking the halls, there was a rehearsal going on a musical theater or down uh, a little bit further, there was dancing happening for rehearsal. A little bit further down, there was choirs coming out of one of the choir rooms. What, it, it is something that can't be quantified and except that, this place is special and I am glad to be a part of it. We have an incredible leader as the principal of Fort Worth Academy of Fine Arts and Dr. Jackson. Her resume uh, goes on for days and days, but what you need to know most importantly is that her care and love and dedication of kids that combine both incredible arts and academics makes this place a special place. You can't go wrong by sending your student, your son, your daughter here. And so with that in mind, I turn it over to Dr. Jackson to lead us through the rest of this open house. Thank you, Mr. Gravely. So here's how the night is going to work. So we have an overview video that's going to provide like a broad brush of our school. And you're going to hear from our fine arts directors, and you're going to hear more about our academics. And then we have a really super fun video to show you that gives you a sneak peek of our campus. We call it our campus tour video. And then we'll have time at the end to answer any questions that you might have. Um, but before we start the video, I wanted to provide just a broad brush overview of our school just to give you an idea of what we're all about. So we uh, serve the greater Fort Worth area and we have concentrations in choral music, dance, theater, and visual arts. And I always call our school like four schools in one. We have an elementary school, we have a middle school, we have a high school, and then overarching that is an off the charts, amazing fine arts conservatory. So in our elementary school, we have almost 300 students. In our middle school, we have about 150 students. And then in our high school, we have about 200 students. So it's like three little schools all in one. So it's kind of a neat little place. We have a 100% graduation rate. Uh, our SAT, our average score is an 1139, and Texas Education Agency rates our elementary school as a high B, we earned an 86, and our middle and high school is a high A, we earned a 96. So that just gives you a little bit, bit of background. So now I want to um, go ahead and segue into that video. The video is really going to give you more details about the different fine arts areas and pathways. So um, without further ado, here's our video. Hello, I'm so glad you guys are watching tonight. I'm Dr. Jennifer Jackson. And I'm the very proud principal at the Fort Worth Academy of Fine Arts. At the Fort Worth Academy of Fine Arts, we serve grades three through 12, 
and we offer four fine arts areas. We have clusters in choral music, visual arts, dance, and theater. One of the things that I am most proud about at Fort Worth Academy of Fine Arts is not only our exemplary fine arts program, but our amazing and rigorous academics program. Fort Worth Academy of Fine Arts is brimming with energy. And anytime during the day, you might hear students singing or you might see dancing or students creating or acting out a scene. It's always really fun to be able to walk through the halls and to see what is happening. Our academics are arts-based or arts-centered. They're always bringing in elements of the arts into the academics. And then our fine arts speak for themselves. I can't wait for you to get to know all of our teachers better and I'm gonna pass the baton to them so that they can share more about their fine arts programs. Hi, I'm Dr. Jonathan Ledger and I am the Artistic Director of the Texas Boys Choir. The Texas Boys Choir encompasses three different auditioned ensembles. TBC Training Choir is for students in grades three through four. Young Men's Ensemble is for students in upper middle school and lower high school whose voices have just changed or their voices in the process of changing. And then our premier ensemble in the Texas Boys Choir is our Tour Choir, which consists of students in grades five through 12. TBC is very special because there, there's a lot of mentorship that occurs in our ensemble, both from me, the artistic director, our associate artistic director, Ms. Kara Simmons, and the older boys in the choir. It's, it's a very nurturing environment where we can really help build the foundation and a love of choral singing in the younger boys so that it's with them and that it matures and grows as they continue through TBC uh, throughout the years. We have a lot of performance opportunities in the Texas Boys Choir. We typically have about 60 to 80 performances throughout the year. We perform on campus, off campus, in churches. We perform at a lot of weddings. We tour regionally, nationally, and internationally. And so it's a wonderful opportunity if you have a love of choral singing and you want to sing in a professional world-class boys choir that sings all over the country and all over the world. I'm proud to work at FWAFA because we have a faculty that's very passionate about what they do, both in the classroom and outside of the classroom. Our fine arts teachers are very talented and gifted in their own areas, and we really provide an environment that provides very high-level training for students at this age. We also have a wonderful academic faculty, and we both strive to reinforce what the other is teaching in their classroom, and so I think that makes this a very, very special and, and unique environment akin to a liberal arts education at the elementary, middle, and high school levels. My name is Kara Simmons, and I am the Artistic Director of the Singing Girls of Texas, also known as SGT. I teach the 7th and 8th grade SGT Training Choir, SGT Young Women's Ensemble, which is um, 9th through 12th grade young ladies, as well as the SGT Touring Choir, which is 9th through 12th grade ladies as well. In addition to that, I also co-teach Academy Singers, which is a 9th through 12th grade mixed ensemble with the TBC Artistic Director, Dr. Ledger. And after school, I teach Community Girls Choir, which is open to kindergarten through 6th grade on Tuesdays and Thursdays. The choral department at FWAFA is unique because we not only adhere to the TEKS art standards for Texas, but we also adhere to the national core art standards and go above and beyond that. We not only teach them the core standards of music, but we also teach them about vocal pedagogy, so the science of singing, diction, so that they can sing in all different kinds of languages, and we teach them music history so that they can have cultural context and historical context to the pieces that they sing. Not only do we teach them all of these incredible music and artistic skills, but we also teach them how to be excellent human beings by fostering an environment of inclusion and family. All of our students feel safe and comfortable in the choir room and are free to express themselves artistically and emotionally. Hi, I'm Jackson Hill, and I'm the elementary choir director here at FWAFA, as well as the artistic director for the Children's Choir of Texas. So in my program, we teach all of the elementary students here at FWAFA, grades third through sixth, uh, music every single day. <clears throat> and we have kids from a wide variety of skill levels. We have students who come to our class that have 
never studied music before in their life and don't know anything about it, as well as students who are really advanced and have years of private lessons and training. For our students who are especially passionate or driven to pursue music, we have a group called the Children's Choir of Texas, or CCT for short. This is the only auditioned elementary choir ensemble in my program, and each year we have around 40 fifth and sixth graders that are a really special performing group. Uh, they're able to travel throughout the Metroplex, and even sometimes statewide or regional, to perform for music conferences, collaborate with university choirs, or community groups. We try to make our classes as student-centered and student-driven as possible. Our main goal is to create independent, intelligent, thoughtful musicians that are capable of learning on their own ultimately. So at all points in time, we're trying to figure out ways to engage students and have as much responsibility for their learning and investment be placed upon them as we can. Uh, we develop literacy in uh, music reading, uh, try to develop their understanding of music history, music theory, as well as develop their performing skills as both an individual and as a member of a bigger ensemble. Hi, my name is Krista Langford and I am the department chair of the Fort Worth Academy of Fine Arts Department of Dance, where I teach middle school and high school dance. Um, and I also direct uh, the Academy Dance Company and the Academy Dance Company trainees. At FWAPA, all elementary students take dance and they are in their dance class every other day where they study ballet and jazz. We really focus on allowing them to learn uh, how to dance safely in an anatomically safe way. We want our dancers to be really safe in all of the training that they're getting. We also introduce some dance related studies, including dance history and even some choreography and improvisation for our elementary dancers. At the middle and high school level, we add in modern dance in addition to their ballet and jazz studies. We also include uh, additional uh, dance-related studies, including choreography and improvisation and dance history and cultural dance and lots of other things. We offer, at the middle school level, a dance ensemble course called Academy Dance Company Trainees. At the high school level, we have a similar course, Academy Dance Company. Those companies get to perform outside of school, lots of communi community performances, and they get lots of different pre-professional dance experiences. At the high school level, we also have electives like dance composition, where we study and focus only on choreography. We also have our point class for our advanced ballet students. There's a lot that makes Fafa Dance a unique. I think one of the biggest things that sets us apart is that we have a real emphasis on creating student choreographers and giving them opportunities. Every year, our school year begins our performance season with our student choreography concert. So all of our students are eligible to audition and create their own dances. And we have student directors that set up the whole show. They audition the groups. Uh, we have student uh, tech crews. It's a really unique experience um, that I definitely would have loved to have as a high school dancer. Hello, I'm Dr. McCartney and I'm the chair of the visual art department at FAFA and I've been here for four years. Um, as chair of the department, I get to, to be involved with all of our art students ages uh, third grade through 12th grade and this year um, I'm actually getting to teach high school art appreciation in addition to teaching elementary classes. We have a great team of four art teachers that help to provide a variety of different classes based on media and age. Um, our uh, students get to really delve deep from the time that they're young, starting at uh, third grade, where they begin to learn technical skills and processes using lots of different types of materials and media, working on those fundamental drawing and painting skills and learning how to render um, form and render natural realistic drawings, um, observational drawings, and then we begin to build on skills with printmaking and ceramics and sculpture. Um, we do some photography, we um, do mixed media projects, 
and um, those skills just are layered and layered and layered all the way up through the 12th grade um, as our students become more rigorous and serious about majoring in the visual arts. Unlike a traditional ISD where a student might only go to art class for 20 or 30 minutes a week, at FAFA our students get to go to art in the elementary classes every other day for an hour and for middle school and high school they get to be in, in classes for 100 minutes every other day. So that makes it um, a really precious space to really work on your technical skills and, and really to, to um, work through creative problem solving and to come up with creative solutions to, to challenges and, and to really put together a, a portfolio that's of the highest quality by the time our students graduate. In fact, some of our juniors and seniors are able to take um, only some basics by the end of their junior and senior years to where they're able to have two to three art classes a day, um, which is just unheard of. So it makes it a really special part of our commitment to excellence at FAFA. For me, one of the things that makes me most proud to work at FAFA is that I get to see children um, become excited about the visual arts and I get to see kids who start, show up on the first day of school saying that they can't draw or they don't know how to do it and that by the, um, even by Christmas break that we are high-fiving and doing dance parties as they learn new skills and feel such great pride in um, the work that they're creating and the fact that they've been able to um, to discover things in themselves that they didn't know were there and that uh, one of the great joys is bringing out the artist in all of my kids, especially at that elementary level where it's all very new and exciting and getting to be the person to share the history of, of artists that I love dearly and that um, I, I think are so important to the study and the, the celebration of our, of our shared humanity, um, art from around the world and getting to ask big, tough, difficult questions about what students see and what does it mean and how does it connect or, or tell them something about their own lives and then seeing kids actually give visual form to their ideas and to come up with things that um, art is the only way they know how to say it that's pretty powerful stuff and it's special every day hi my name is Lindy Davis and I am the chair of our theater department here at FWAFA I um, see oversee all of the theater department but I also teach high school theater which is freshmen, sophomores, juniors, and seniors. And I am very excited that I get to teach our advanced acting class, which is seniors. So I'd love to tell you just a little bit about what the, our theater department looks like for our elementary, our middle school, and our high school. Um, for elementary, it's so exciting because we ask all of our elementary kids to experience a little bit of all of the arts, whether that's the area they auditioned in or not. So all of our elementary students get to take a theater class, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth, which is great. And then in middle school, we do have seventh and eighth grade theater, and I'm excited to say that starting this year, there is also a, te a tech option, a theater tech option for our middle schoolers in eighth grade. So if they're interested in tech theater, they don't have to wait till high school, and I think that's really exciting. Musical theater also starts in middle school, and we do have two musical theater classes for middle schoolers right now. Then in high school, things really start to branch and spread out so that students can really think if theater is their path, what part of theater do they want to go into? Are they um, interested in acting or performing, directing in tech theater, whether it's costuming or props or lighting, sound design, set design, all of those things, or musical theater. So we do have those options for all high schoolers. They can start to specialize, and the older they get, the more they can specialize. I think there's a lot of reasons students should come here, and I think they're different for every student. I think for some students, it's truly just that they're passionate about some form of the arts, and they really want their daily education to involve that, and this is a place where you can do that. For some students, I think, um, it is because of the nature and the feeling of the school, that they are creative thinkers, whether it's in their fine arts classes, but also in their academic classes. And they need a place that understands creative thinkers are creative thinkers in all of their classes, not just some of their classes. And so I think that that is an awesome 
reason to come to Huafa in that that is the nature of our school. It's not just in our fine arts classes that we think creatively, it's in all that we do. And so for those where their brains really focus in that direction, it's just a wonderful thing to come every day and feel like you fit in and feel like you're welcome and the way that you think is celebrated, not just tolerated. Hi there, my name is Ben Phillips. I am the technical director at FWAFA, and so that means that I'm in charge of all of the technical aspects that go into a show, so scenery, lighting, sound, um, costumes, everything like that that isn't uh, specifically acting. That's what we do in the tech theater department. And in our classwork at FWAFA, we have um, a couple of different levels of tech theater. So um, we have a middle school tech theater option. So kids in middle school can sort of get a taste of what tech theater is like and what they'll be doing in high school. And then once they get into high school, they can start with tech theater one, which is sort of the introduction to the craft, talking about scenery, lighting and sound mainly and sort of what those areas entail, what designers do, what production people do to put up shows. And then they'll move into stagecraft class, which is really a practical hands-on version of tech theater where most of the skills that they'll be developing are in building sets and producing lights. So it's the technology-based um, portion of the tech program. And then they'll move on to advanced design, which is where students get the opportunity to design sets and design lights and sound and all of those things that um, go into producing a show and making the decisions of what's the set going to look like, what are the lights going to look like, what are we going to hear in the world of the play. And so those students will get the opportunity to really be a part of the shows that we do because of that artistic work that they're doing. I would say that the most rewarding part of working at FWAFA for me has been the engagement that we get from the students here. It's really unlike any place that I've experienced before just how excited the kids are to come to class and to work on the shows that we produce and to be a part of the art that FWAFA produces. The dedication to the craft and the art from the kids at FWAFA is really something special. Hello everyone, I am Shana Ferraro, the Community Programs Director for Texas Center for Arts and Academics. I want to thank you for joining us for our open house event. I hope that you learned a lot and are excited about continuing your process for joining one of our charter schools. So we have a couple of next steps that are open to you. Um, one option is our audition workshops. These are scheduled for November 14th, January 16th. These are a great opportunity for you to go step-by-step step through our online audition process. You're gonna learn about how they schedule these auditions, what the instructional audition videos will include, how to find your preparation materials, how to create that video, and get it uploaded and sent to us. Going through one of these audition workshops will make you feel confident that you know how to help your student go through that audition and get it submitted successfully. Another opportunity we have is our Friday campus tours. The groups are very small and limited, so we suggest you sign up as soon as possible, but it's a great way for you to come onto the campus and see our students in action. Both of these can be found on our website at artsacademics.org. When you go to the admissions tab, there'll be an opportunity to sign up for either an audition workshop or one of our Friday campus tours. The most important step is going to be getting your application in, which will be during our open enrollment period, which will run from January 13th until February 15th. Again, go to the website, go to that admissions tab, and you'll be able to find the application and get everything started. Once you submit it, that's when you get to meet one of my great friends, Ms. Paula Fukuhara, and she is going to walk you through the whole audition and application process. 
So since she's going to be such an important part, I want you to go ahead and meet her now. Hi everyone, my name is Paula Fukuhar and I'm the Fine Arts Administrative Assistant for Texas Center for Arts and Academics. I'm the person who will be receiving your applications and sending you schedules for your auditions during the admissions process. Like Ms. Ferraro said, audition workshops will be on November 14th and January 16th. You can find more information at artsacademics.org forward slash apply. I'd love to see you there! Thanks for watching that video with me. Thanks for watching that video with me. Isn't it a cool school? That's why we call it the little gem of the Fort Worth fine arts community. Something that really stands out to me is the number of times our teachers and artistic directors use the word family. Being such a small school, we're really able to focus on individual students and help every single student become the very best version of themselves. Something else that really stands out to me about our school is just the passion that our teachers have and that our students have for the arts. I don't know how many times students and parents alike have stopped me and said, oh my gosh, I finally feel like I'm among my tribe. I am in a place that celebrates creative thinking and I'm with other you know, learners and friends that we all kind of think alike and have that creative brain. So I think that's something that makes us really special. So before we start the next video, I want to walk you through uh, how our schedule works for our different grade bands. So in our elementary, so, so just to begin, our school day is longer than a traditional school day. Our students start school at eight o'clock and our dismissal bell rings at 345. In grades three through six, that's what we consider our elementary school. Those students enjoy going to all four fine arts areas. Every single day they go to choir. And then two days a week, they go to dance and theater. And then the other two days a week, they go to PE and art. So our elementary kiddos get to go to every single fine arts all week long, uh, which is different than a traditional elementary school where you might go to a fine art, like an art class once or twice a week. So literally our elementary students in grades three through six spend almost three hours in fine arts a day. And then they have their literacy block, they have their math block, and they have their science and social studies. So that's elementary. Then in our middle school, grades seven and eight, all of our classes in our core areas are pre-AP classes. So students take English language arts and math and science and Texas history and PE. And then there's room for two fine arts electives. And students can, this is kind of where things start to specialize. So students can take up to two fine arts areas for, you know, they can take different ones for their electives or they can, you know, like just take theater classes. We have 10 fine arts electives, like different classes for our middle schoolers to take. Then in high school, all of our students graduate on what's called the Distinguished Level of Achievement Diploma Plan. That means that they take four credits in all of their core content areas. And then the rest of the time they are taking fine arts classes. And like the middle schoolers, as they get older, that is when they really start to specialize. And in our high school, we have literally 77 fine arts and electives classes for our ninth through 12th graders. So everybody can find their niche and uh, take some classes that they really enjoy. Also, uh, we're a, a thriving school that we have all kinds of honors organizations and societies and clubs. There's all kinds of things to do outside of the arts at Fort Worth Academy of Fine Arts. We have 
National Junior Honor Society, we have National Honor Society, we have Junior Thespians, International Thespian Society, we have an honor society in our dance, it's called Tri-M. We also have our National Dance Honor Society, our National Art Honor Society, we have Film Club, Student Council, Yearbook. There's lots to do at Fort Worth Academy of Fine Arts. Then I also wanted to highlight just some of what I call our signature practices. So you should come and visit us first thing in the morning because we have a morning assembly and it is probably our trademark signature practice. And it's kind of like a mini pep rally every single morning where all of our students, all 647 of them, uh, come together in the auditorium and just celebrate the day and set the intention for the day. And it's led by our student council and by our high school students. And um, it's just really fun. They promote all their different activities and it's just a time to come together as one unit in the school. Another signature practice that I wanna highlight is uh, our social emotional learning. Uh, that is something that's very near and dear to my heart. Uh, I always say that, you know, your academics are going to get you the job of your dreams in the 21st century market, but it's your soft skills, it's your um, emotional intelligence that's going to keep the job for you. So uh, we put a lot of credence into also developing the social emotional side of our kids. All of our teachers have been trained in responsive classroom practices. Uh, we have respect agreements that we uh, use as like our class constitution and builds rapport and community. We practice classroom um, community circles and we also abide by the tribes agreements. And then um, the last signature practice that really comes to mind is that um, much of our academics has an arts focused or arts integrated uh, slant to it. Our kids do lots of hands on projects where they're able to bring in their love or their knowledge of the fine arts and just their ability to be divergent thinkers into the academics classroom. So um, there's a lot of collaboration going on, a lot of communication. Uh, all those good 21st century job skills that we want our kiddos to have um, when they leave us so that they lead highly successful lives. We also love to have fun. It seems like every week there is some kind of celebration or performance or something fun that's happening. We have Howdy Week, we have Kindness Week, uh, we celebrate Red Ribbon Week. Uh, we have things called doodahs and boo bashes. That's where our high school kids take over and uh, provide a really fun afternoon for our elementary school kids on the days that we have half days. So um, it's just a fun place to be. So just wanted to point those few things out before we start the next video. So this next video, I always say seeing is believing. So we threw open our doors and brought in the video camera and wanted to show everyone a sneak peek, a behind the scenes look at what a typical day looks like at FWAFA. Uh, I think I uh, walked 20,000 steps that day, but you're going to get to see our premiere and auditioned ensembles. You're gonna get to see our incredible instruction that's happening and, um, Take it away, here we go, our campus tour. Welcome to Forward Academy of Fine Arts. Hello, I'm Dr. Jennifer Jackson, and I'm the very proud principal of Fort Worth Academy of Fine Arts. Just a little bit about us, we serve grades three through 12, and we offer four fine arts areas. We have choir, dance, theater, and visual arts. I'm excited that you're joining me today on this video campus tour. You're going to see some behind the scenes action and a sneak peek at our third grade academic classrooms and our third grade fine arts classrooms. 
as well as some middle school classrooms and our high school academic classes, as well as our high school auditions and premier performing groups. Uh, we offer a rigorous academic curriculum. We have pre-AP classes starting in middle school and AP classes in high school. And we have 650 students in those grades, three through 12, and we're rated a high B by the Texas Education Agency. So um, like I said, I'm excited that you're with me today and let's get started. So starting in seventh grade, there are three different pathways that students can follow if they're interested in theater. We have our traditional theater pathway, we have musical theater, and then we have technical theater. Technical theater is all the behind the scenes things like costuming, set design, lighting, and sound. So we're gonna take a look at our behind the scenes lighting and sound board. So here we are in our lighting and sound booth. Our tech theater students spend uh, their class time back here learning about lighting and sound design. So I'm joined here by two of our tech theater students who actually started their off journeys in different arts areas. We have Trey, who started as a Texas Boys Choir person, and we have Shelby, who joined us in just our foundational theater classes, and now they're working behind the scenes. Trey, so tell, tell me what got you interested in tech theater. So what got me interested in tech theater was a past teacher. He kind of like brought me in and was like, this is the soundboard. This was way before we had Midas, our new and improved soundboard. We were still working with our old ones, but I really enjoyed doing it before. I kind of stuff that raised through our high school. Awesome. So I'm standing outside of Studio B, and this is where we have third grade dance. She is one of our fabulous art teachers, and we are here with our high school drawing class. And here we have Emma, Paola, and Isabel, and we've been studying perspective drawing, and now they are taking what they've learned and creating it on the wall, thinking about installation art and changing the space with art. students enjoy three fine arts a day. So this is our third graders in action. They are learning about Roman theater and they're beginning their making their past. run by the Texas Center for Arts Plus Academics. So not only do we have phenomenal fine arts, but we have absolutely outstanding academics. So I just wanted to give you a sneak peek into one of our middle school social studies classes taught by the extraordinary Mr. Zamora. We are making magic every day. I am in the third grade hallway, and we're about to see Miss Wiggins' third graders, and she's introducing the third graders to a new friend named Poppy.
studio spaces. And another one of our audition groups in high school, the Academy Musical Theater Company. Jones and I am in charge of costuming uh, for all of our theatrical productions and even some of our um, ballet productions and wherever we need costume. Um, this is Maya Mikowski and she is one of my costuming students. As you can see we are in the middle of all kinds of costumes and we have everything from military to period clothing uh, to <laughs> modern day clothing and all points in between. Maya's going to tell you just a little bit about some of the costumes that we have modified uh, or created throughout the years. So what's the first one, Maya? All right, so this one was Adelaide's costume last year for Guys and Dolls, our musical of last year. And we modified it by just adding a bunch of pearls and gems to it because her character's a little extra. So obviously we added a little bit of flair to her dress. And then this is one of our uh, mission coats from a Guys and Dolls as well. And it's sort of is just a plain red chef jacket. So we've added all these buttons and different ribbon accents on the side. And we did these to about 10 of them. So there's quite a lot of those in here. What's really amazing is that Maya got to design last year. Talk a minute about uh, what you designed for uh, Guys and Dolls. Oh yeah, so for uh, Guys and Dolls, uh, we had, well, a lot of costumes for Guys and Dolls. So we all really split it up. But the, I mostly worked on the, um, oh, I completely forgot the Hot Box Girl costumes and the, um, the Take Back Your Mink costume. So I got to design all the hats for that. And we did renderings and sketched it out. And we bought old swimsuits and converted them into dresses. And it was just a really fun time. Yeah. So anyway, that's what we do. <laughs> and we love it. Very <laughs> cool. Very cool. audition to be in our premier dance company. auditioned choirs at Fort Worth Academy of Fine Arts. In addition to Texas Boys Choir and the Singing Girls of Texas, we also have the Children's Choir of Texas. And here's a sneak peek at them hard at work today. 
teachers. He's a published author, he's an artist himself, and he's one of our students' favorites. Isn't it a joyful place? I absolutely love seeing our kids in action. And if you would like to come on campus, 
and see for yourself in person, we offer tours every Friday. All you have to do is RSVP on our website under our audition tab. So we're having small group tours every Friday at nine o'clock. So I invite you to come see us in person. Uh, we're getting ready to segue into our question and answer part of our open house this evening. So if some questions have come to mind, please feel free to put them in our comments section. And while you're doing that, I want to spend a little bit of time walking you through the audition process. So our elementary students in grades three through six audition in two arts areas. So they can audition in choir or dance, visual arts or theater. Our grades seven and eight students, they audition in one to two arts areas. So if a student would like to audition in two areas, they absolutely can. And we look at the higher of the two scores. Our students in grades nine through 12 audition in one fine arts area. All of the audition materials are located on our website under the FWAFA apply tab under admissions. Uh, so there's a, like a one stop shop where you can print out all the audition materials for each fine art area. So our auditions this year are going to be all online. And what will happen is students will watch an instructional video that's been put together by our teachers, and then they will film themselves participating in the video. So in dance, our grades three through six dancers learn and perform a ballet sequence as well as a jazz sequence. In grades seven through 12, they do a ballet sequence, a jazz sequence, and a contemporary um, modern sequence. And then our ninth through 12th graders, in addition to doing those three different genres of dance, they also perform a self choreographed solo. Then our visual artists in grades three through 12 video themselves uh, drawing a still life. And all the instructions will be in the instructional video, but our teachers walk them through how to put together a still life. And then they have a certain amount of time to draw that still life. Um, to show off their technical skills and their observational skills. And then they also draw to a prompt that's a universal prompt and um, to highlight their creativity and their innovative thinking. Then in grades seven through 12, they do the same thing, those two different kinds of art pieces, but then they also present a portfolio and all the information about the different pieces that are required for the portfolio are on the website in the audition materials. Then in theater, we have two different routes um, in the, our audition process. For just theater, our general theater route, uh, students in grades three through 12 perform a prepared monologue and all the requirements are there on the website with suggestions for monologues. And then they also participate in some improvis improvisational games and activities. Then our seventh through 12th graders, actors, also participate in a cold reading. In musical theater, the jack of all trades, uh, they perform the prepared monologue. They perform a dance sequence. And they also sing a prepared 32 bar song from a musical. Once again, all of those materials are on our website and they tell you all the particulars about that. Then in our choir, our third through sixth graders perform a prepared song and also perform some guided exercises. And then our seventh through 12th grade singers perform a song, 
And then they also run through some activities that demonstrate their musical literacy knowledge and also their sight reading. Uh, one of the great things is that we offer two audition workshops and that's going to help get your performer, your artist ready and comfortable for, you know, lights, sound, action to film those videos. Um, they're about an hour and a half long and our teachers will be online and go through all the ins and outs of the audition process so that everybody has a really clear idea of what they're looking for and of the task um, that the students will be videoing themselves doing. Um, so those audition workshops are on November 14th and on January 16th. Um, another person that I want to highlight to you is Paula Fukuhara. She is our fine arts administrative assistant and she is going to hold your hand through the audition process. She is your point person. She will answer all your admissions questions. Uh, so sh she will um, help you get your audition scheduled. And like I said, just answer any question that you have about the audition process. Um, so that's Miss Paula. So I think that's basically the gist of our audition process. So let's take a look at some of these questions that we have rolling in. I think we took care of the first question, which is about, do students take all four areas of art in grades three through 12? Or do they only choose one area of focus? So grades three through six, enjoy all four arts areas and they enjoy choir every single day and then they go to art and dance and theater and pe on those opposite days then they start specializing in grades 7 through 12. so in middle school they can choose two fine arts areas even in high school if they want to you know choose two arts areas to focus on we have enough fine arts electives that that's possible but most of our students you know find their passion find their groove in that one niche and they continue their path that way so it really becomes more specialized as they get older the next question is my son who's currently in third grade has never taken a dance or music lesson just has a general love of dancing around the house and creating comic books for fun. Would he still be able to audition? Absolutely. Uh, kids like your son, I call the children of promise. They just have a natural inclination for artistic pursuits. Uh, so absolutely uh, sign him up for an audition. Like I said, our elementary kids spend almost three hours a day in fine arts. So if his hobby is drawing comic books and dancing around the house, then he's gonna have a great time at elementary school. Another question is, do you also offer dance classes or musical theater classes after school? Absolutely, yes. We have um, just top, notch conservatories after school where our students can go even deeper into their technical skills and have more time to practice in their fine art area. You can find all that information on our website under our conservatories. We have an art conservatory, a music conservatory, and a dance conservatory. We also offer summer conservatory classes, and that's where many of our students start out in our conservatory classes and, you know, realize, hey, I'm, I like this, I'm good at this, and then they join us at the school. Let's see, there's another question. Do you have a program for students with dyslexia? Yes, uh, we absolutely serve students with dyslexia. We use the SPIRE Reading Intervention Program. It's based on the Orton-Gillingham approach. So uh, we can definitely serve those needs. And then there is a question about our school's COVID-19 protocol. 
And do we offer virtual learning? Yes. So this year we have about 60% of our students on campus. 40% of our students have chosen uh, to learn online at home. So we offer both of those pathways. We have been very careful in reconceptualizing all of our performances this year because we wanted to make sure we were offering equal access to performances and for those enrichment opportunities to both our in-school learners and our at-home learners. So I invite you to check out our performances. Uh, I think our next one coming up is our combined choir concerts and you'll find that online. And then in January, we have um, a big dance performance that's going to be amazing. Oh, we also have Welcome to the 60s. Like I said, there's so much going on at FWAFA. But yes, we offer both of those routes. I cannot speak more highly of our students and our teachers and staff. They have really taken our health protocols very seriously and follow them um, uh, with 100% compliance. I think at the end of the day, we all want to be together. We learn better together. We want to be together. So they've taken things very seriously. We've based our health practices on what I call the core six. And the core six are self-screening every day, adult self-screen um, on an app. Our students and parents self-screen at home. Uh, everybody wears a mask 100% of the time unless they're at lunch. And then when they're at lunch, they're spaced at least six feet apart. Uh, we wash hands and sanitize hands all throughout the day when kids enter a classroom, when kids are leaving a classroom. We're disinfecting uh, after class. Everyone wipes down their desk and their chair. We also have a cleaning crew that's deep cleaning every night and we're limiting supplies. So like in an art class, when normally they would all be sharing supplies, everyone has their own. And um, those are the core six and they're working. We also have guidelines about exhalations in our choir classes and our PE classes and in our dance classes. So like I said, I've been really, really impressed with the level of integrity that our students and our teachers are having with our core six practices. I can't speak more highly of them. Uh, let's see. The next question is, do you recommend students coming on the tours as well, or is it more for the parents? It is for the kids. Like I said, seeing is believing and uh, we are going to capture their heart when they come into our building. I like it that we are keeping the tours kind of small so we can customize the tour, uh, especially for that particular grade level and that particular arts area. And it's just a good time to see everybody in action, to see uh, birds of a feather and all those creative folks. And we can answer, you know, any one-on-one -on -one questions, you know, that are highly individualized for you. So absolutely, uh, we invite uh, the student, the budding artist to our on-campus tours. Here's another great question. Do you offer Spanish, computer, or other non-fine arts electives? Yes, great question. So our eighth graders start actually their high school journeys by taking foreign language. So we offer Spanish and we offer French and we're working on offering American Sign Language next year. We also have a robust um, computer and technology education uh, pathway where we offer um, principles of technology, animation one and two, web technology, uh, digital media, uh, an animation class one and two. So um, digital art, things like that. So students can kind of take that route as well when they get into high school. Then we have um, some other electives like college readiness. We have psychology and sociology 
And we also have a class called Integration of Abilities. And it's a cool class for our high school kids where it takes like all the different arts and just the idea of creativity and um, puts it all together. And it's like a study of creativity. So that's a really fun class too. So then the next question is, do you have to reapply each year? So nope. Once you are a Fwafen, you are always a Fwafen. Uh, so uh, students come in in third grade and we're actually graduating a amazing artist this year that she has spent all 10 years with us. Uh, that is something that is um, highly prevalent that our kids have been there uh, the whole time. So once you audition once, then um, you, don't, you don't have to audition anymore. Do you offer services for students that have been diagnosed with ADHD and need a little extra help with focusing on their work? Uh, absolutely. So we are a, a public charter school. So we follow all the guidelines for special education as well as section 504. We use an inclusion model with um, special education and offer a wide variety of services. We have all different kinds of learners and we have resources for those learners so that everybody thrives. Like I said, something that is special about us is that we have a smaller student population. So we are able to offer, you know, those customized kind of differentiated instruction. So we can definitely serve the needs of our various learners. Uh, another thing that I want to highlight um, that maybe you saw in our campus video in our elementary school. Well, first, you're just going to see in that video that all the different areas have a different feel. But in our elementary school, you'll see that we have flexible seating. So I really believe in student agency and voice and choice. So our elementary classrooms and even our middle school and high school classrooms are decked out in flexible seating. So students really learn early on, like what kind of learner they are, how they learn best, what environment they learn best in, what kind of chair they sit best in. So you'll see flexible seating throughout our uh, building. And that's just another way that we differentiate instruction. Another thing that I want to highlight is our internship opportunities that we have for our older students. So um, they're kind of like pet project classes. So if our, our students who are in their internships may have a special interest in a particular area, and so they are able to do an internship in that area. And I think that's something really special. Uh, we have some students who shadow in our graphics department and our communications department with Texas Center for Arts Plus Academics. So they get like a real world view of what it's like uh, to work in those occupations. And then they lend their talents to those areas as well. And then there's one more question. Do our students get to do graphic design, animation, or any digital arts? Yes. So uh, like I said, we have a robust computer and technology education program, and we offer all of those classes. And so students can, in addition to their fine arts areas, also take electives in those classes. So I think our questions are coming to an end. It has been so much fun sharing uh, our little gem of the Fort Worth arts community with us, Fort Worth um, Academy of Fine Arts. If you have any other questions, I want you to feel free to email me. It's jennifer.jackson at fwafa.org. Or if you have questions about admissions or the audition process, you can email admission at fwafa.org. Uh, but Thank you so much for joining us tonight. I hope you have a great evening and we look forward to seeing you at our audition workshops. The first one being on November 14th. Bye.